Hello, everyone. This is Monsef Afkar, and uh, thank you so much for joining us in this new call of Your Divine Uniqueness. Very excited to, to connect with you again um, here live. So thank you for your presence, and also thank you for those who will either listen or watch the replay. Um, yeah, and also very, very excited that Elena um, Koshran is, is with us on the show. Um, very excited about the, the, the subjects and the information that she will be sharing with us because it's... Uh, how to say it's it's so, something i think very and i feel very essential to to our evolution to to shift from uh, the linear way of thinking and creating and also how we live um, life in general as we are moving more and more to um like connecting to our soul like bringing our soul essence and our multi-dimensionality in in uh, to our physical reality and merging both um at some point we we evolve more to see reality from a dis different perspective from more multi-dimensional uh, multi-dimensional perspective which is beyond linearity that's that's the mind is working with and um at the same time we, we honor that we honor the human experience but um it's more about bringing both the human and the the divine or the multi-dimensional aspects of who we are and yeah i'm really excited about the subject and uh, what elena will be um, sharing with us and um the guidance that she will bring whether through uh, talking about the subject or uh through the what, the the question during the q a so um we'll have that in the second part of the call um i think and for that if you want to talk to elena you can raise your hand by pressing start uh by pressing the raise hand uh link on the zoom app or um you can type in your questions on the um, the chat box, which is both on Zoom app and in YouTube. And if you are on the phone, um, I'm not sure if we have phone callers today. So for that, you can um, raise your hand by pressing star nine on your phone. And um, yeah, so before we start, I would love to share with you a little bit about Elena. So she is an intuitive and quantum energy healer, light weaver, earth wisdom carrier, teacher and speaker. Elena holds the potent ability to see each individual through the lens of love and beauty, creating a safe space for vast expansion and transformation. Pulled from a young age to experience what she considers real magic, to know what exists beyond our five senses, to feel firsthand that in every moment we are loved, supported, and in communion with our beautiful earth. As aspects of nature ourselves, connected to the deep love that weaves all things, and to our team of lights, guides, and ancestors. Elena loves to reawaken the remembrance of our beauty, sovereignty, and ability to create a life here of empowerment, peace, and abundance in order to contribute to the powerful transformations occurring on the planet at this time. And um, yeah, beautiful. So very, very excited, Elena. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, and thank you for everyone who's here. And thank you, Mansa, for creating just such a really beautiful container. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, so so in the beginning, um, because it's, it's the first time you join us here on the show, so I would love if you can tell us um, about your story and and also your work, how you work with, with your clients. Sure. Um, Thank you. Well, my story, you know, is um, appropriately non-linear. <laughs> And so it's been it's been a pretty long winding path. Um, starting at a young age, I had an out of body experience when I was probably in fourth grade. This moment of um, my family, we have land, and my brother and I are fourth generation. It's very special to me, and I was there. And in this uh, instant moment, suddenly I was out of my body, and I was looking down on our earth and from this incredibly elevated perspective. And I was overwhelmed with being alive, <laughs> with uh, the presence of this beauty and this love. And, you know, just as instantly I was back down in my, in my fourth grade body. And so um, after that, I 
I kind of went dormant for a while. You know, I, I went back to kind of doing things the way I thought I was supposed to and um, more that linear path as we'll be discussing. And then really things started to open up for me again when uh, my youngest was born about 14 years ago. And around that time, I came across the phrase walking in both worlds. And when I heard that, my entire self lit up. I didn't even exactly understand what that meant, but it was it was a door. You know, it was that that moment beyond words that I, I didn't know what it would look like. I didn't know what was going to come of it, but I knew I had to do that. And so uh, my experience has been diving very, very deeply into my own healing, into peeling my own layers back, into um, clearing the patterns and the heaviness and the stories and, and also honoring that what has really pulled me from the beginning was this deep desire to touch, uh, you referenced it in my bio, what I consider like real magic. And to me, real magic is what is beyond what we see, what is beyond what we think we're capable of. You know, what are our levels of connection um, and alignment? And, and so that that huge space, I, I've been kind of um, a detective for a long time. You know, OK, feel that curtain back. What's next? What's next? And just this constant, constant deep dive to see what's there, you know, and certainly I'm here from a space of still being on that path. I'm always evolving and growing you know, and doing my own healing and expansion. And, um, and so yeah, that led to where I am now, which is I do one on ones, I do group work. Um, I've started leading retreats this year. And for a while, my linear path was um, tripping me up in how to describe the work, because it's not textbook. It pulls from a lot of experiences, a lot of spaces I've been in, you know, a lot of modalities I've studied, but it's all kind of weaves in to where I call it opening up space with a client. We tap into the space and we feel into what's coming up for healing in that moment, you know, and so that what is needed in that moment can look very different. And um, what is needed in that moment certainly differs from person to person. It can differ from the same person from session to session. And so it's it's a nonlinear space as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does absolutely. And yeah, also we can feel that that's uh with time we our perspective sometimes is it, it just happens naturally it's it starts shifting and changing and we start seeing things um in in, in, a, in a new way that we weren't in in the past and um yes so so about linear linear linear, linear <laughs> uh, living uh in a linear uh way and also like uh, my question is Living beyond that, how, how do you see that like um, being lived or expressed in 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 the physical reality? Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's it's all encompassing. You know, it, it's really a space that's beyond our um, capacity, even of our mental understanding. And I say that we honor the mind. We need the mind, and also. It's really about tapping into that space, uh, whether your word is source or universal consciousness or love, divine love, you know, what, whatever your, your language is there. It's about how can we, number one, remember our wholeness, but something that I really like to uh, bring forward in my sessions is first off, it's so important that we start from the space of remembering that we're whole, regardless of what our story has been, what has happened to us, what we've experienced, our wholeness never left. Okay, so the way I see it and feel it is we're these beautiful channels, you know, these beautiful fractals of, of source and our experiences and our 
patterns and our traumas and all of that can kind of um, create layer, layers of density in different ways. And so, so then as we begin to step off of the linear path, we start to uh, come into that remembrance of regardless of what has happened to me or what my experience has been, if I reorient from my wholeness, I'm not looking to fix myself, holding myself from uh, feeling broken. I'm allowing my wholeness to guide me into what's coming up so that I can feel more joy, so I can feel more free, so that I can explore more or create more, you know, so there's so there's so many layers to this, and that's why I love to talk about it. Um, yeah, does that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that you mentioned that, like, uh, like approaching our spiritual path or healing, like not from like the feeling of being broke, because uh, many times when we when we approach that from that state of being, at some point it, we feel like maybe addicted to finding maybe the wrong thing within us that we need to fix and it feels like it's a never ending loop it's it just one thing after the other show, show up um yeah yeah certainly and that you know that was has also been my experience before being on that again that past linear path of okay what else is there what else is there i need to dig out and it was before i was really coming into that realization within myself of you're not broken, you're simply realigning. And when we allow ourselves to realign, then so much opens up. And, and yeah, and it, and it relates to the fact that at the end of the day, everything is consciousness. So where, where are we holding ourselves? Where are we holding our consciousness? So if we're holding our consciousness from a space of brokenness, well, we're going to continue to find all the broken parts. If we hold ourselves from a space of wholeness, then we can feel how full that is. Yes, there might be discomfort. Yes, there might be pain, but we're not broken. Those are two very different energetic spaces. And, and simply remembering our wholeness in itself is enormous. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Uh, absolutely. And I I had a question. So it, it it's... <laughs> So when when we see that, like the way that you described it, it's, it's how to say, it brings a lot of relief. Uh, but also, like, how do you see? Because, like, even when we see our wholeness or we see life through our sovereignty, uh, many times like challenges continue to happen. Like it's it's also at the same time feels like it it doesn't stop. So um, can we still maybe have challenges or maybe? feel uncomfortable while being uh feeling whole or connected to our true self yeah absolutely we can and and you know of course we're here on the earth and and challenges will come but the way we navigate starts to shift and once we start to navigate the way uh we're moving through the challenges that in itself is also an expansive space right so as a as a tangible example, something that used to really make you angry um, instantly, right? When we're instantly uh, provoked, there's no space, right? We just go right into that um, that trigger point or that wound. And so what what starts to happen as we because I like to I like to kind of explain this as um, related to exercise, you know, essentially, what do we do to strengthen our physical bodies? We exercise, right? We do something consistently. And so we, we gain comfortability in our body or with that movement. And it's the same thing in um, exercising our spiritual muscles. You know, the more we tap into those spaces, the more comfortable they become, the more they become who we innately are. And so when we're doing that, and the challenges come up, we're not so quick to respond from the wound. So what it does, um, again, earlier you were mentioning that the mind is wants to be linear, right? And often that comes from trying to create a sense of safety. Like the mind is um, 
my guides kind of showed it to me like this. If we are mind dominant with which many of us, you know, have to kind of rebalance, uh, essentially we can have blinders on. So it's like, I can see this much ahead of me and the part of me that is wanting to feel safe um, continues to go forward and try and have everything figured out because then I'm safe, right? When we move into our wholeness, it starts to um, foster embodiment. When we are embodied, we're not just moving from that mental space. We're not seeking and scanning in order to feel safe. We're deepening into our presence so when we're in our presence, it creates a pause. And in that pause, there's choice. So again, when we're, it's not about the challenges completely disappear, but we start to change. And then, and then the landscape of our life does start to shift. So yes, challenges will appear, but often uh, not to the same degree and frequency. And when they do arrive, when we're in that choice point, maybe if we've always gone right and, and going right is operating from that space of pain or feeling small or hurt or what, whatever it is, this time we start to go left. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. So, so it, it's more, it becomes more um, of a choice. Like before, like we, how to say, we were more like reacting to our traumas and fears, but then we can see that we can feel afraid or we can feel grounded. And it's how to say, we feel that like we've, we've always have um, had the choice, but at this point we feel it. We, and we can make the choices that's how to say, maybe uh, navigate that challenge or that experience maybe more grounded and more peacefully and more centered. Um, so it doesn't mean that we will not have uh, challenges. And and also, as you were talking, you, you, you mentioned uh, feeling safe. And ma many times, like, um, when we want to, to share our light, to show up, um, maybe share our gifts, if it is a uh, spiritual gift, or maybe creating something that we want to share um, with others. We keep waiting in the beginning, like until we feel safe or feel ready. And many times we, it's it's more about fears. We don't feel ready. Actually, it's it's more about the traumas and fear and shame that we have. So, how do you, how uh, what's your advice on approaching those situations? Um, yeah, it's it is for me about always um, doing the cleanup. You know, so so doing your personal work, doing your personal healing, starting to deepen into those spaces of awareness where, oh, sometimes it's very conscious. Sometimes we know I've been operating in this pattern. Sometimes we're holding things that um, we're not even aware of. Right. They go deep. They are maybe even cellular or ancestral. So it's very important that we start to tend to ourselves in whatever way feels authentic and, and supportive and just starting to do that cleanup, okay? And then it starts to look like as we do that cleanup, we're creating space because again, um, in terms of energy and vibration, those, those wounds, those traumas, those fears, not good or bad, uh, tend to be heavier, more dense. And so we start to clean up our emotional body, our mental body, our physical, our spirit, and then we create space. And, and from that created space, it's, it's again, it's not waiting for everything to be perfect and, and, and take that action, but it's to uh, begin to utilize our practices that we've cultivated through our healing in order to nurture ourselves and take take aligned action yeah absolutely um i love that and um also like nurturing ourselves like connecting to mother earth because this is uh, uh, i think it's part of of your work um so how can that like how can we connect more uh with um uh, like nature spirits and um 
maybe use that connection to support us to navigate those maybe those the dualities of life and those challenges yeah so um i really i love to work with people just to remind everyone and that it's important that we move through our life here remembering that we are nature we are part of nature and and as we heal the earth receives healing and to tap into earth energies to tap into uh, the deep relationship that's available there is foundational. And so you bring up a really beautiful point. What do we want to do if we're building something? We have to have a really strong, beautiful, nurturing foundation. So um, beginning to, you know, everything at the end of the day is relationship, whether it's with another person, whether it's with um, opening up to the energy of a tree. We're, we're fostering relationships all the time. And, and so um, there are so many beautiful ways of connecting to nature, but first and foremost, just remembering that there's no separation there. There's no separation between us and the earth. There's no separation, obviously, between one another. There's no separation between us and our, and our guides. It, it truly is all oneness. That, that expansive space is infinite. And so uh, when we bring it back down to connecting to the earth, uh, really entering that space from an understanding of I'm tapping into the support that's here for me in every moment. From the time we arrive as, as a baby, we are supported. As we learn to walk, the earth holds us. You know, there's sentience there. There's consciousness there. And so um, entering it from a space of this is my foundation. I am innately held on this planet. And then from there, going into the heart space because just just because the earth doesn't communicate like we do doesn't mean there's not uh, beautiful communication happening all the time but we enter it through the heart space we enter it through that space beyond words and what starts to happen is we open that channel of communication that we've had since birth and then that also begins to foster um, a confidence in self. I am supported. I can reach out. I, I do have these abilities innately to commune, to receive, to be held. And, um, and there's such, such infinite support there. If, if everyone will just take a moment and we, we can tune into the energy of the earth. You know, we can take a breath and we can feel the presence underneath us. But then what happens if you allow yourself to get a little more specific? And is there a tree near your home or maybe near your job that kind of strikes you? You can tap into that right now. What, what happens if you take a moment and you feel in specifically to the presence of all of the stones. The earth is made of crystals and holds all of those beautiful frequencies that are anchored in by the stones and the minerals and the gold, all of that. And so even though we're moving in connection to a physical space, feel how expansive that, that space is. You know, if we only focused on what's available to us in our foundation and in our physical earth, we could spend a lifetime there. But that innate connection supports us uh, relaxing our nervous system. It supports our physical body in releasing these patterns and these programs that we're talking about. And, it, and when we um, are in that relaxed state, we more easily release we more easily open and unwind but it's it's very foundational yeah yeah absolutely it's it really does i, I totally agree with you and um also it's it helps us when uh how to say especially when we are in the beginning of um, establishing that connection like becoming more more aware of it um because many times like in the beginning we we try so hard to understand mentally how 
how we will connect and um, like what are our gifts. But when we, we are more in that centered state of being, um, we are more in the allowance. We allow um, maybe things to, to unfold the way they need to on the right timing and the right way. Because like uh, each one uh, connects in, in their own way. And it's, um, I think also flexibility can really help in, in that. Absolutely, because, um, you know, everyone has their own essence and their own nuance. And so what might be really true for me might not be for you, or maybe what I'm saying is true for you, but with a little adjustment, you know, so having that flexibility, giving yourself that permission to, oh, well, maybe she's saying she sees it like this, but I'm, I'm seeing it like this, or I'm feeling it like this and giving yourself that permission. Because again, when we, when we look at what is coming into healing in our society, it's been this very linear, get on the track, you know, all of those things that everyone here is aware of are um, disassembling. And when we allow ourselves to step off of that, we can start to feel again, that, that spaciousness. Because we're told we have to, uh, you know, get certifications so we're worthy, or we have to read all of the books. Even in spirituality, you know, do you know all of the terms, yeah. right? Do you understand yeah. all the dimensions? You know, it, it's infinite, and it, and it certainly has its purpose, absolutely, and also, can we hold that our worthiness doesn't come from, okay, I've, I've read all of the spiritual books. So, so now I'm worthy of stepping into this space, whether it's, you know, feeling ready to share your own spiritual gifts or step out and be seen. And so just starting to um, gently hold ourselves in a space of, uh, if I feel into this moment, does it feel expansive? Or does it feel constrictive? That in itself can be just a really easy but powerful entry point. And if it feels constrictive, taking a breath and putting your hands on your heart and, okay, am I ready to see? Is this a pattern I've been holding for a long time? Is there something uh, where, is there an area I'm holding fear that's ready to unwind? And then we breathe into the next step. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, I love that it, it can it can it can really be helpful and help us to, like you said earlier, to to come back to to our center. And also, uh, an, another thing is about words because when we share words, like we try to transmit a message, but the energy of it it's it's much bigger, and. And many times what happens is we try to make others see things the way we see them and we try very hard with words. Um, so how do how do we approach this and is it and also how how to make it easier to allow others maybe to understand things on their own way, um, even if it's different than than us? So <clears throat> I'm just going to take a breath with this question. I feel that it is about honoring what's wanting to come through you as the channel that you are and honoring that what you're creating or what you're saying, what you're speaking, will be received by those who are ready and in a space to hear it. And it's okay that it won't be for everyone. Because, you know, I feel like we are like musical notes or, um, you know, everyone has their own language, so to speak. So things that I wasn't ready to hear seven years ago, you know, suddenly made sense to me two months ago. So um, giving, giving ourselves permission 
that um, what is wanting to come through me is aligned and worthy and giving it to the world as a gift with no expectations or attachments. Because certainly words are a beautiful way of creating. It's one of the ways, I mean, obviously it's, we're creating with our words all the time, but going back to everything is operating from a space of where is our consciousness in that moment, we can feel if I'm speaking to you right now, but here in the back of my mind is a worry of saying everything perfectly so that everyone on this call loves me, right? then I'm operating from um, a conscious state, an unconscious space of fear. So essentially that's going to affect my vibration, the words that I'm speaking to you. And so a gift for myself can be getting really grounded before things like this, dropping into my heart space and then allowing what is coming through to be enough. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I love your answer because it really inspires us um, to just be ourselves, that we don't need to try hard to um, maybe please others or maybe say the things that others want to, to hear. It's more just allow, allowing our lights and uh, the message to, to just uh, flow through us. And um, yeah, that's that was, I, I love the, the answer. And also, yeah, go ahead. Well, if if you don't mind, something that that brings up for me too is um, when we allow that space, what happens, um, it brings more alignment into our life. Because again, from a space of consciousness, if I'm operating from fear and wanting to be liked, and also this was a personal pattern I had to heal. So just speaking like, you know, fully letting my human be seen, I some one of my patterns was uh, people pleasing. I had I had to do that. Um, I had to heal that aspect. And as I allowed myself to do that, what happens um, is the people who do see you show start to show up. You know, so it can be scary to be seen. It can be intimidating to speak our truth. But there's such a beauty and a potency there. Because if you're not speaking your truth, the people who are for you can't hear you. They can't find you. And so, it again, it opens up. So if we really relate it back to our topic today, linear path, I'm speaking from a space of people pleasing or fear. So that affects my vibration in a certain way. And it, it allows me to really focus on being concerned about uh, being liked as our example. As I allow myself to heal that and unwind it, everybody who I wasn't even aware of that's out here that I haven't met yet, that I hadn't met yet, you know, those people can suddenly start to come in and those connections are available. Whereas if we're operating from, from the woundedness of the past, uh, we're not in our highest alignment yeah absolutely and i love that's why uh, that she said um when we try to protect ourselves or we we keep like um how to say taking action from wound the, our wounded aspects like we are not allowing other people who who can see us and hear yes, yes, um our true self can can show up for for us um so yeah i, I just want to mention that um it was very really inspiring and um, so can we take questions from the audience? Sure. So yeah, again, everyone, if you are on Zoom app, you can raise your hand. Um, or if you are on the phone, you can uh, click on star nine to raise your hand. And if you and if you're, you want to type your question, you can do that on the chat box on Zoom or on YouTube. And um, Tanya, can you please unmute yourself? Hello? Hello. This okay. I, okay. Hello. Now I can see you. Uh, I'm greeting everyone. I think I'm new on this uh, in this group. Welcome, Tanya. Yeah. So my question is: uh, I don't think I'm afraid to be seen, but I'm afraid to be judged. So I kind of 
procrastinate with creating my YouTube channel. I had that wish to create my own YouTube channel for years and I haven't even started. So, and I think it is a, a fear of being judged. So how, how I release it? Because I've been, I've been working on releasing a lot of trauma and stuff, but if I didn't start it, it means that I'm, I'm still, I have this kind of either fear of, um, you know, to be judged by my friends or by maybe even people that I don't know. So um, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, so, <clears throat> so first of all, Sometimes these fears come forward for us to, and we, and we, we do everything like, and it's not to uh, come from a state of perfectionism or, um, you know, what, what am I doing incorrectly? But can you put your hands on your heart for a moment? Yes, sure. And we're just gonna ground you a little bit, okay? So again, this coming into the spaciousness of stepping off the linear path is not discounting our bodies. It's allowing the remembrance that everything happens through our bodies. So take another big breath and just let your body unwind a little bit like it's wanting to. Sometimes I mirror people, sometimes it's the same side on my back left side. I'm feeling an unwinding that's wanting to happen from your past. Thank you. Yes, please. And you don't have to tell anyone here, but can you allow your child self, just allow yourself to see at what age you started fearing being judged, having to navigate um, in a smaller space in order to feel safe in your world. I think I know, yes. And can you allow her to come in with you? Just as you would any, any child, just open your arms inside your heart and let her come in and be held. Yes. So do you feel, even in the, just this simple few minutes, how, how you opened? Yes. So... <clears throat> If you can start to tend to her and what she needs, you can do this together and it can be in palatable steps. So starting in a way that feels safe, doing some of that groundwork creation, but, but can you approach it from the space of doing it together? You feel how everything softened? Yes, I do. So you two have some unwinding to do together and it's coming up for your benefit and your healing. And so it's a beautiful thing. I see, thank you. Good luck to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. You have a lot of light to share. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, yeah, I, I love um, Tanya's question because it's it's something that um, many of us uh, been experiencing. And also, I um, I have a question related to that is. Um, in the time when we see that it's been maybe a long time that uh, maybe we didn't take action or we didn't create what we want, we feel like we, we've been missing out, that uh, maybe it's late. 
that's uh, how how do you how do you see that and how can we approach that that we see it that um, there are always new opportunities it's there are infinite opportunities at every moment to to create what we want yeah so <clears throat> i'm going to share something that was really uh, pivotal in my own expansion because before this moment i had this deep desire as i said to just i there was something I needed to find for my own awareness. And I ended up having a journey where I was taken back to oneness consciousness before everything was created. And it was this presence of light that contained all the colors. You know, what happens when we uh, shine light through a prism, right? White light holds all the colors. And so I saw souls as color and frequency and vibration and love and connectedness and how creation wanted to experience creation through itself and so here we are as beautiful fractals so when we can you know it can be and again speaking from experience and still my own evolution we can get really caught up in our human and our human is beautiful and so expansive and we can really limit ourselves and and say you know i didn't do this when and shame and all, all of those stories come in. But when we take a breath and we allow ourselves to ground and we can really remember that this space here is about expansion and learning and remembering. And really there are no mistakes. You know, that doesn't mean we don't have accountability when we need to apologize. When we're operating from a certain level of existence and we, we clean that, that up. But at the end of the day, it goes back to consciousness and we're always operating from uh, our current level of understanding. So that creates a space of, we can look back through our lives and the reason we didn't do something at that time was because of where we were residing in our consciousness. And that is simply learning. That's simply evolution. That's part of our evolution. People are always, you know, and that looks, obviously, we know that looks many ways of where people are in their consciousness, but essentially there's no mistakes, there's learning and remembering. And so even that, do you feel how that is like a big exhale? Right. When we're tapping into this nonlinear space, we're talking about being able to tap into infinity, we're, we're talking about tapping into a uh, pure source energy that we are aspects of that is vast and infinite and it really becomes can i allow myself to be the clear channel that i innately am and can i allow my container as such to receive so much and then to share from that expanded space yeah yeah absolutely it it brings a lot of relief and like you said like we see things like um like our infinite or exp expanded um being that we are always able to create from um what, what we what, what we really desire in each moment and also the past experiences are more about um they are helping us to to grow and evolve like you you mentioned and um yeah, so thank you so much, Elena. And also thank you, Tanya, for your question. And um, we have a question from uh, Karen. I feel my guides and elementals, um, but I don't get the clear messages I would like hearing. Any advice? Yeah, so <clears throat> what I keep feeling around you is to give yourself permission to be the very big channel that you are. It feels like um, there's some fear around uh, being able to really experience your power fully because power and force are not the same, right? Sometimes, sometimes part of our story is to fear our power because of um, entanglements that we've witnessed or experienced. 
but first and foremost, taking some time to just get familiar with the, the big channel that you are. And also to open up to um, how you personally receive your messages. And so a little unwinding of how you've been told they need to appear and getting deepening that relationship, giving yourself uh, more permission. Uh, thank you. I was on mute. Thank you so much. Um, uh, do, do you feel you want to share more? Or... Yeah. Yeah, I'm... go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you have um, a connection to a very old earth energy where, um, where there was just a free flowing conversation between us and nature. And so there's, there's some really beautiful expansions there for you if you just let yourself tap in and just trust. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. And uh, also thank you. Thank you, Karen. And um, yeah, so uh, again, everyone, if you want to ask your question, you can either raise your hand on Zoom um, or click in uh, star nine on your phone or type in your question on the chat boxes. And Elena, you are offering um, our audience a 90 minute one-on-one uh, -on -one intuitive energy session. And um, I invite everyone to visit um, the link yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Elena, yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Elena, E-L-A-I-N-A. -A. Or you can click on the special offer button, which is on the live events page, and it will be available on the replay page and also on the um, YouTube video description. So um, yeah, so Elena, I would love if you can tell us what our audience can can experience with you in, in the session. Yeah, um, as I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, when I describe my work, I, I always speak from a space of, it may look like this, or it could look like this. Um, because again, it's it's not from a formula. Um, so I, I call it opening up the space, opening up the energy. And then uh, we go in together basically in order to see and feel what is there for you right now. And then from that information, we do what we are shown in order to release or open or align. So sometimes it can look purely like energy work. Sometimes it can be certain guides come in. I have guides I work with. Sometimes people's guides come in. Sometimes elements of nature come in. Um, often it's a lot of clearing at first because, uh, you know, that's just part of it, especially when we're starting, it's just to clean up. So it can be clearing cords, clearing loops, all those things. Sometimes it's attachments. It's a pretty vast space, but I really enjoy it because it's, I never know exactly where we're going until we're in it. And it's, it's magical and it's an honor to be in that space with, with others. I've seen really incredible things and witnessed really incredible things. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, well, thank you so much, uh, Elena, for uh, yeah creating that that space for for others uh, to receive your support, to feel safe, and uh, um, also to 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 really allow themselves to go through the healing process and bring more of their light and their, their own essence. And yeah, many times we need. Uh, we need support from others like there are aspects that we we can handle on our own but all of us at some point we, we also we ask for help or support from others it's more like co-creation and um yeah so i'm i'm very grateful to you uh for being available to our audience and uh, everyone i really recommend that you work one-on-one -on -one with uh elena and again the link is yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash elena yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash elena E L A I N A, um, or you can click on the special offer button on the the live page or the replay page, 
and also the link will be available on YouTube video description and I will also put it on the chat box now um yeah thank you again um Elena and we have more question um we have a phone caller I think is Joshua maybe hello phone number ending with 6677 can you unmute yourself hello 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 do you, do you hear me is it joshua oh. you are muted now yes you are unmuted hello oh, good. yes we hear you now hi 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 this is joshua um my question is uh around worthiness in the inner child i've been working on um just feeling worthiness for a lot of things, love, money, abundance. And I'm, I'm curious what uh, little Joshua um, has to say at this moment, since we've been doing a little stuff with him. So can you allow yourself to carve out some time to go all the way back to that space when you were in utero? Yes. In the time where you, all you had to do was rest and all you had to do was receive and grow. Yes. And I know you're driving, so you know, with, <laughs> <laughs> with caution, uh, but can you yes, yes. let yourself tap into that space where there was nothing to do Prove there was just being and receiving. Mm, yes. And so can you feel the automatic connection to being nurtured? Yeah, feel freeing in my body. Yeah. So so there's some space for you there to to uh, spend some more time and allow that innate tenderness to really hold you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. It's a beautiful space for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monsa. Thank you, Joshua. Um, much love. And also, thank you so much, Elena. Um, let me mute okay <laughs> so um yeah that, that that was a very beautiful space i mean for for all of us to be in in that space um thank you for that and also a question from uh veronica i'm in the process of moving from a house to a condo and saddened by uh by leaving all the positive energy and gardens i'm leaving what can i do to ease the transition Hmm. Well, first there's, um, and they come from all of the love and in a beautiful space, but there's just some chords to release here around that, that space, that home. And so can you give yourself, um, kind of a personal honoring ceremony of the time that you spent and really allow yourself to be in all of the beauty and all of the magic and really from a space of, of gratitude. And, and I just keep seeing that mm, opening up this beautiful, tunnel for you that carries you forward kind of like a wave into into this next space 
just because you're physically leaving, you know, we can tap into energies at any moment. And it's almost like, it almost is like a guide that you can tap into all of that, that which you cultivated during that time, allowing it uh, to continue to feed and nurture your heart while staying open to what is presenting itself in your future. So really blessing up your space and, and what it's provided for you. And also your gardens, um, you can continue to work with those nature spirits, even when you're not physically there. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Elena. Also, Veronica, um, if you've ever worked with flower essences or or essences with with nature, it feels like if you made yourself um, something like that and brought it with you to continue to really have like a tangible physical connection, working with that essence to continue. Yeah, just uh, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful space. So continuing your relationship in that way too feels nourishing. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. Elena. And um, yeah, also thank you so much, Veronica, for your question. And let's see. Erica, can you please unmute yourself? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I was wondering if you're able to tap into, I hold such tension in my neck. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> yeah, as soon as, as soon as we tapped in, I started feeling uh, the need to yawn and goes into my shoulders as well, the back of my neck. And this has been uh, something that's been with you for a while. Yeah, most of my life, as long as I can remember. Yeah, okay. So this is um, before this life. Do you wanna go there real quick? Yes. Okay, so you're very, very safe. Okay. Yes. Can you just breathe and let's really bring you fully into your body. As you're ready. Yes. And can you just look with me how there's essentially a shackle around your neck? <clears throat> okay. And it kind of has a rusty chain on it. And you don't have to go through um, the woundedness from that particular lifetime that's coming up. It's just, we can keep it safe and clean, but we're just gonna look together. And when I say, look, maybe you feel, or maybe you know, so just trusting how it comes through for you. But let's go to the back. And I want you to look down and see how you have a key in your hand and you can put that key right there in that lock. And when you're ready, just allow yourself to turn it and you're going to feel it click open. Yeah, I can feel shaking it off. Uh-huh. There's a little bit of fear, and this is not in judgment. It's just so you're aware of it. There's a little bit of fear of what life is like without it, okay? It's very familiar. Sometimes the uncomfortable is familiar, and we don't want it, but it can be a little scary to not have it at the same time. So just take a really big, deep breath. 
Go ahead and start to open up and bring your shoulders back and just a little movement. Yeah, and can you feel <clears throat> there's some waves that are coming up? So just be with your breath and allow there's some th there's some energy that's wanting to move through as a result and it's just coming up to clear. Is it coming from a spot in my solar plexus? Yes. <laughs> and a Is little bit underneath. It's like you feel that wave light coming up and out. Yeah, because there's sort of like a burning sensation. Mm -hmm. A spot. Because we can, those two things, right? Our voice and our, our will, our power. There's a connection there. And so this opened and then now it's like letting that come through and realign. So allowing yourself to be in this space for a little bit, you might be releasing for, for a while. You've been holding this a long time. It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be hard or a struggle. You are very ready, but just holding yourself in awareness, uh, drink a lot of water. And you may just let yourself, um, you know, if you're a journaler, even if you're not, just see what wants to come out because I keep being shown your hand, just writing. And it's not like uh, conscious writing. It's, it's to help you clear. And don't worry if it doesn't even make sense. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. This is really big for you. Yeah. But you're ready. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Erica. And uh, also thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Elena, for the guidance. And um, let's see, I have a question from Camille. Um, I've experienced many miracles in my life and would love to have many more. Anything I should open in my consciousness? Yeah, it, it is. It's a beautiful energy. You have a lot of, um, it's, it's, it's very light and joyful. And it is about, um, as we were referencing earlier, can you allow your physical body to ground in deeper so that you are, um, just a minute, I feel it, I'm waiting for the words. So the way I'm seeing it is almost like this. Um, I'm not sure if you're watching the video, but almost like a really big, beautiful inverted pyramid. So you've had like all of this experience around you here. And can you spend a little bit of time uh, allowing your root chakra to open wider, your sacral, even your channel all the way into the earth so that your, it's, a, it's kind of like stepping into um, the next version of expansion, if that makes sense. It's like widening your container. And also my guides are telling me to keep cultivating what you're cultivating. You have um, some really beautiful relationships in the spirit realm. Mm. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Camille. Yeah, she said it all makes sense. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much, Elena. Um, let's see. We yeah, still have some time. Uh, Yvette, can you please unmute yourself? Hi, Masaf. Hi, Yvette. Hi, thank you for taking the call. Oh, I'm still recuperating from COVID. Um, but the last couple of months, I've been trying to find um, a new job, something that's better suited and financially rewarding besides being supportive and value for what I bring to the table. And nothing has been opening up. I've been you know, networking, letting people know. Don't know if you can tap in to see if there's any blocks from it coming into fruition. Well, <clears throat> what immediately came is, and, and I say this from the space of sometimes and again, referring, referring to the nonlinear, sometimes we have something that is um, in our presence or a challenge or, um, you know, right in front of us. And it might be something over here that needs addressing in order to um, open up some alignment. Before you even started speaking, I was shown um, that there's some old grief to release. And so as you allow yourself to just full permission, release that grief, it's going to open up some spaciousness for you. Do you wanna do a moment of it here? Yes, that'd be great. Um, so is, it, is that something from childhood? Grief, or is that more recent that you're referring to? It feels layered. It feels, um, I almost see it kind of like a weaving, like there's some, there's some discouragement, and then there's some things that are older that have been carried longer that are ready to come out. Uh, on the back side of the, really a lot around the lungs in general, the back of the heart, the back of the lungs. So do you mind just breathing in there with me for a moment? Yes. We're gonna focus in on the back of the lungs and the back of the heart space and Sometimes my guides show me things in almost a metaphorical way, but they're showing me that we can plant a seed of light right there on the back of your heart. So let's breathe right into the back where it's tight and where it's been heavy and where being a human has felt like a lot. So you may feel sensation, you may feel a tingling or a warmth, you may not, it's okay. But there's an unwinding right there at the back of your heart. So all you need to do is breathe, really allow yourself to be here with your body. And the body itself is wanting to release some grief around. Again, there's just a pattern of being a human hasn't always been easy. And so it just feels, feels like it's uh, been a heavy rock on the back, on your back, kind of. Do you have guides that you work with? When I do, usually it's either generic of my saying, you know, to connect to the 
arcane girls and masters, or I'll hone in specifically with you know the warrior archangel uh, Michael. Okay, because I was seeing um, three to four angels that are just showing me that they, when you ask them, when you need that lift, just to center and, and literally allow them to lift your vibration, to lift the spirit of your heart. And the way, you know, sometimes it can feel like, well, we're talking about this, but what I'm needing is this in my job. But the way it threads back is when you're lifting your vibration and you're um, coming into that spaciousness, you're opening up that alignment. And so that alignment is allowing things to come to you in the right timing. And so the way you can step into your greater sovereignty is in those moments when you feel the fear or the discouragement, recenter, come back into your heart, and then put your creation energy towards the perfect thing is, is opening up for me, because we're always using our creator energy. And you can feel how one is... Um, more constricted and one taps you back into spaciousness. Thank you, I can feel, um, especially in, in the heart, lung area. Again, I'm so recuperating from, from COVID, but I can feel, um, like my airways, my bronchial tubes have opened up so there's more breathing, more oxygen air. Yeah. Into the lung. And uh, perfect, Nina. Thank you. That was great. Thank you so much. Keep holding your, hold yourself in, in grace, like a, like a warm blanket around you. Is there any like flower essence that, you know, bark remedy that I can use to, to help you in this period of time? Um, Star of Bethlehem. It's coming up. Um, dandelion is coming up. So maybe start with those two and then trust your intuition going further. Ask your body. Perfect. Thank you. I've, I've used that um, the star of Bethlehem and I'll, on occasions uh, use a dandelion, drink dandelion tea. Um, so thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, yeah. Mansa. Thank you, Yvette. Much love. And um, yeah, thank you so much, Elena. My um, pleasure. For the guidance and uh, I have a question from Mary. Um, can you tell me if I need to do something more regarding creating good health? So, Mary, are you able to open up the line for a second? Yes. Okay. So... <clears throat> feels um, foundational when I when I feel in after your question it feels like there are some mm, foundational resets so um, 
no, I'm, I'm really a proponent of doing all the things. So, you know, honoring this space, honoring chiropractic, honoring whatever type of uh, support you receive in, um, in your medical journey. But what I'm, what I'm feeling is that it's like, um, I'm almost seeing like scaffolding, like there's just some refinements around foundation. I don't know if that's making sense to you. Sometimes I see these things and then as we go in deeper, like more clarity comes. No, I'm not, I'm not picking anything up from that. Okay. What are you, what are you currently doing? Oh, <laughs> uh, grounding, chanting, meditation, um, two, two, two different healers, uh, one for almost two years now. Um, oh, also, you know, just different, uh, physical things, uh, different supplements and things like that. I have a pretty severe condition, condition, which is improving. It's improving. It's just, I'm, I was just wondering if maybe it was from past life that, and that's not what's clearing past life clearings. I mean, uh, I'm doing a lot of things. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, I lost my, um, my acupuncturist and, and another healer with COVID, but it is what it is. I asked God to send me a long distance healer and now I just keep getting more and more. Yeah, I keep, I keep being shown internal scaffolding. Um, well, could it be, are you maybe seeing the scaffolding of my physical body? Yeah, like, is this condition related to? Like your bones or your like? No, I, I have heart failure. <clears throat> I actually should be dead. So I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but it's I have a lot of internal scar tissue, which is what which is what I'm dealing with now, because it's pretty painful. Releasing all that scar tissue. Sure. I need a little more time to feel into this one because they're just very persistent in showing me that it's a foundational shift. Well, obviously, you know, my yeah. emotional foundation <laughs> needed a lot of work and I, I have done a lot of that. <clears throat> I did find myself not wanting to show up and ask a question. So I thought, okay, there goes the self-worth that's been going on forever. So part of it is going back to, so yes, the can, you know, we have this physical thing and then also because this can be very um, confronting, but can you <clears throat> step further into that space of wholeness simultaneously? Yes, I, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So what do you see there? What do you feel there? I, I feel some, some peace and some uh, joy. Because sometimes like it is, you're, you're beautifully powerful for being here and being in this space that not everyone um, can navigate as gracefully. And sometimes the focus can be so much on the condition. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that we don't continue to do those things, right? Those healings and those tendings. But can you come into that space of wholeness? 
Okay. And allow that expansion from the inside out. Yeah, and there's some things that are wanting to clear along the back of the spine. <clears throat> so, who you are, the beauty that you are beyond your condition. You feel that? Yes. And more emotionally, just physically is. Yeah. It, it is what it is, you know, it is getting better. Yeah. But um, you, you're ahead. doing all of this cultivating of all the, you know, all those, all the healings and the supplements and all of that. And then, so now can you, not from a place of should or heaviness or, but more, more to tap into all that you are. Well, that's good. That feels more powerful. That makes sense. It was throwing me for a loop for a second because I was like, why do I keep seeing scaffolding? <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a minute to just let all the information come in. So. Okay, so as I'm feeling these, because it, it, because of my condition, it's it's all the time. I mean, I have difficult reading and difficult doing difficulty doing things all the time. I mean, I could do a lot more than a lot of people, mm -hmm. but it's the constant, constant. So I now I <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Oh well. It's okay. This is about. Um not thinking how do you think i'm feeling about the possibility i thought i got to a hundred percent of believing i could be cured i think there's part that's still a little bit afraid because what okay. if what if it doesn't happen <clears throat> or who am i when it's done yeah so those are the things I would just uh, spend some time with. Okay. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Much love to you. Too. Thank you, Mary. Much love. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, Elena. Um, yeah, we still have six minutes. Would you like to share so something more or take a question? One more. What do you feel? Uh... I think if everyone's willing, it would be really beautiful just to come into a space together as a close. Yes. <clears throat> so wherever you are, as long as you're not driving, <laughs> closing your eyes. And first, just honoring this circle of light that we were sharing today and i do that from a place of gratitude to each and every one of you and can we together through our breath simply focus on the heart focus on the space of our energetic heart the space within us that knows the spaciousness that exists outside of the linear path, the aspect of us that knows, that feels, that understands, that operates from oneness, connectedness, that remembers 
the expansive totality of who we are beyond this body, still honoring this body. And so as we breathe here together and open up our heart spaces more consciously, more expansively, And we allow ourselves to simply be shown only from a space of observation. Is there a pattern? Is there a space in which I have been operating that has been linear and restrictive? And can I allow my soul connection through the space of my heart to simply show me for my highest good what is ready to be released in this moment. And even if it's not fully comfortable right now, can I have curiosity about what it would be like to do so, what exists for me on the other side? And as you breathe from your heart, can you allow your awareness to begin to expand larger than your heart space? You may have a sensation of light emanating from you or warmth or color, or you may simply know. As you allow your awareness emanating from your heart to expand beyond your body, And you allow it to expand beyond the room that you're in, then your neighborhood, your city. Knowing that you are completely safe here in your expansion, allowing your awareness to continue to grow beyond the country you're in, beyond the earth. You may feel like you're having a really big stretch. Can you continue to allow your awareness to expand out until you begin to become aware of all the spaciousness? All of the spaciousness that contains what's beyond our current level of understanding, what's beyond what happens once we give ourselves permission to release what's been heavy? Can you feel and bring into your awareness that this encompasses befriending the unknown? The unknown contains all possibilities. Can you open your awareness and simply allow yourself to engage with the creation energy of all possibilities. Just notice, notice how you feel in your emotional body, in your mental body, your spirit. This is a space that's beyond restriction and we can tap into this at any moment. Let yourself be playful. Let yourself be joyful. It doesn't have to be serious. We're here to play and enjoy and remember. Can you feel the remembering here? Now feel as though you're gathering all of this magic up 
in your awareness, in your energy. And as you allow your awareness to come back to your physical body, traveling back and back and back until you're right here again in this room, all of us together. And just feel what opened up for you. It may be very clear. It may not be familiar yet. All of that is okay. Just give yourself permission. When you gently blink your eyes open, can you do so from the understanding that you just shifted your perspective? So when you open your eyes again, can you sit in that space of integration of what you tapped into, what you opened up, connected with? Because there's so much. Something I feel called to share as we close is over a year ago, my guides told me that at this time in humanity, it's time for us to ground into the heart. Because mo mo we've all heard to open our heart and be in the heart space, but can you feel the difference when you allow yourself to ground into the heart, to settle into that space? It's embodied. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, yeah, very good for you. Um, everyone would love to hear your feedback. You can type it on the chat box. And for me, it was like the feeling that uh, I don't need to wait for the for the shift or the things that I'm creating to show up. It's more like there's so much in 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 the now in here. It's it's just more about being back into the present moment and seeing that. Um, and whatever needs to happen will come on the right time. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was profound. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you so very much, Pinkan. Thank you, Mary. Thanks so <laughs> much. Um, elevating on the scaffolding is good. <laughs> um, yeah, beautiful. Thank you again. Thank you everyone, and thank you again, um, Elena. Very grateful to you. For, for everything, for the inspiration, the guidance, the support you gave to our callers and also the um, the group process you did in the end. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's very much been my pleasure. So I appreciate mm -hmm. you having me. <laughs> thank you. And uh, yeah, so everyone, thank you so much for, for being here with us today, for sharing with us this space, co-creating with us this experience. Very grateful to each and every one of you. And um, again, I highly recommend that you work one-on-one -on -one with Elena. And I will put the link on the chat box again. So the link is yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Elena. Yourdivineuniqueness.com forward slash Elena. E-L-A-I-N-A. -A. Or you can click on the special offer button, which is um, on the live event page or the replay page and on YouTube video description. And uh, yeah, so, so that's everyone. I'm sending you so much love and I will see you on the next call. Bye-bye everyone. Bye everyone, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.